Hey, John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I got this question. Uh, it's a, a programming assignment. <laughs> that's, that's the subject. So, uh, so this is from, uh, I think it's AJ. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just say AJ. So AJ uh, sent me this question and uh, he wants me to do his homework for him. So, hmm, should I do your homework for you, AJ? I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to do your homework for you, but maybe I'll help you with your homework uh, because I think this illustrates a good, uh, this is a good example of, of kind of problem solving and I haven't really done a real programming related question on here. So we're going to get technical here. So anyway, uh, a, this is the question that AJ had and I didn't give him the exact code, but AJ, if you're listening, I'm going to give you a, a way to work this out. Uh, to solve this and kind of a way to think through some of these problems because this is a common thing I think in interviews you get questions like this you should be good at these types of questions uh, they're called algorithm questions uh, you know the uh, what's that book uh, cracking the coding interview has a lot of these right that's so that's why it's such a popular book anyway so so basically the question goes something like this uh, he's, he's got a string he's supposed to return all the substrings of that string that contain uh, at least an uppercase character and no digits. So you have some random string, all the substrings of it, right? All the chunks that contain uh, an uppercase character and no digit. And AJ said, I can return all the substrings, but I don't know about the, the uppercase character and the, the digit part. So let's break this down and figure out how we would solve this. So the best way to work on these kind of problems is to Think about them first. First, you have to really, really understand the problem, right? So make sure that you understand exactly what it's being asked for. We've got a string. We want all the substrings. Do we understand what that means? What, what, what does it mean to have all the substrings? Well, it means, you know, from zero to one is a substring of the first character. The first two characters, that's a substring. First three characters, right? These are kind of permutations. What if we skip the first character and just do the second and third character, right? So those are all the substrings. It's all the possible combinations in the same order of characters that we can get from that string, all the pieces that we could we could chunk out of that. So that's that's one. Um, and then it says that we want to only return those substrings that have a, have at least one uppercase character and have no digits in them. So uh, so so okay. So that's the first thing is we need to understand the problem really well. Then we need to break the problem down into steps and a lot of the time the way to do this is to manually go through and take a simple example and think about logically how we would do this. So let's say that I had this this string that uh, the, the string the that starts with a capital T, right? So I could go through and I could say, well, one substring is the string itself, the. It contains a capital letter, so that's good. Okay, another substring would just be T that contains a capital letter and it has no digits, so that's good. Another substring would be TH, that, that one's good, right? Another one would be uh, HE, lowercase h, lowercase e. Ah, that one doesn't have a capital, so we throw that one out. Another substring would be H, okay? That one doesn't have a capital, so we throw that out. Another substring would be E, that one doesn't have a substring, or it doesn't have a, a capital, so we throw that one out, right? So then, now can I do this, can I make one with a digit? So what if we put the, five, right? Or put a five in the middle of it, right? And we could go through and manually kind of work this out a few times to see what the pattern is. But you can see what the pattern kind of is as I'm working through this manually. And that's going to give you some help to figure out what the algorithm should be. So you, if you're working through this yourself, and I encourage you to try, like solve this problem, but you, you can see what, what that pattern is, what the heuristics that I'm using to solve this are and you can expand this out and try bigger ones, right? Uh, but but once you kind of have the the general idea of, of how the heuristic that you're going to use to, to solve this, what you're going to what the algorithm is going to be, then what you want to do is you want to break it into steps. So this is the the reason why this problem is difficult is because it's requiring a few different things. But one of the steps, the first step that you actually have to do is to be able to get all the permutations of substrings of a string. So let's forget about the other requirements, forget about the capital letter, forget about the digit, and let's just get all of the permutations, all the substrings. 
Okay, so we could do that pretty easily, right? We could write, can we write an algorithm to do that? I, th I, think, I think we can, right? I think if you think about how this works, right? You could basically say, okay, I, I'm gonna start with, you know, an index of zero, and then I'm gonna take uh, zero to one, zero to two, zero to three, however, up to the length of the thing. And then I am going to start with the index of one and take one to two, one to three, one to four, all the way to the length of the thing. So that would give us all of the substrings, right? So, so that's, okay, so we've solved that problem. Next, we, we add a new requirement. The next requirement is that it must contain a capital letter. So we can now get all of our substrings, right? And for each substring, when we have a loop that's journeying a substring, we can do one check. We can scan that substring and see, does it have a capital letter in it? If it doesn't, we can skip it and not output that one. Simple enough, right? Then we add the third requirement, which is it can't contain a digit. Now we just add another check. If it's got a capital letter, we check, does it have a digit in it? If it does have a digit in it, then we throw it out because we want to have only the ones without digits. What we'll be left with is all the substrings that have one capital letter and don't have a digit. So it, you know, when, it, when you think about it and break it down that way, it's actually fairly simple. Now, there's still another step. This is not optimal how we're doing this because we're iterating through every time and then rescanning the, the substring to check for the things. Could we do this as we're, as we're doing the substring? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to this question, right? I'd have to go and, and, and figure it out and, and look at my code and see, but there might be, the, the next step is to revise this and to figure out, you know, is there something that we could do that would make this, uh, make this easier or, or more efficient? And then you don't want to skip that step, right? Because maybe you can detect uh, the capital, you know, from the beginning, or you can detect that a substring, you, maybe you can count where the capital letters are or where the digits are, and in fact, anytime you hit a digit, right, you're gonna know that there's there's not gonna be any substrings after that, so maybe you can make that part more efficient. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into all the details of that, but AJ, I think that should solve your problem, right? Uh, it, it, and this is kind of just good in general, like if you're gonna help someone, don't just give them a solution, give them the way to get to the solution, and so hopefully, hopefully that that helps you. If you're, if you're struggling with these kind of problems, uh, I've got a Pluralsight course out there uh, called uh, uh, Prepare for the Job Interview, Check that one out. Uh, that that I go through some of these algorithm problems there, um, and then also I, I, that crack in the coding interview. That book is pretty good uh, on that. But you got to practice these things, right? Uh, I, I talk about there's a site called Top Coder uh, that you can go and you can do the algorithm problems there. That's a great one. I think there's another one called Project Euler, and you can do that. Uh, there's a book called Programming Pearls by John Bentley, which is good for it as well. And then there's another site out there can't think of the name of it now, but there's a site that, that actually tests programmers and they have like a monthly competition as well. But anyway, you just gotta practice these kinds of problems and do those steps to break it down. So just to give you a quick rehash, first thing you do is understand the problem extremely well. Make sure that you totally understand the problem before you begin. Next, solve it manually. Go through and, and solve a simple case and a harder case. Solve a few cases manually so that you can understand the algorithm that you manually use. Most of the time when we program, what we're doing is we're taking a manual process and we're automating it. That's what programming essentially is. So you gotta be able to solve it manually, otherwise you're not gonna be able to write code. Don't just jump into the code. Then you break the problem down into smaller steps and solve each step at a time adding adding each step you know as you as you solve the previous one and then the fourth step is you go and revise it you go back and you say how could i make this more efficient how could you do things that you couldn't do manually right that wouldn't scale manually because now you've got code so can i make this more efficient can i make it take less memory can i make it run faster can i make it work better right and that's that's it and that's how you solve these problems and what you're going to find also one last bit on this is that you're there there's going to be only like a handful of these types of problems. They're all gonna fall into these categories. And what it's gonna be is it's gonna be you understanding data structures and then uh, some very specific uh, types of algorithms that exist uh, in working with those data structures. And every problem is gonna fall into those spaces. So even though it might seem like there's thousands of problems out there, there's probably only 50 of them. There's probably 50 kinds of problems that if you master how to solve all 50 of those problems, any algorithm problem someone hits you with, you're just gonna be like, 
bam, and you'll be able to solve it. So anyway, AJ, hopefully that helps you. Uh, it's probably a little late for, for your homework assignment because I think you sent me this email quite a while. But, uh, but if you liked uh, this, uh, this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. That's always cool. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care.